Well, I, on Friday I had a really interesting phone call with somebody who found my YouTube videos and reached out to me and said he wanted to talk with me. Um, my videos definitely did not sit well with him. He didn't like the message. He didn't like the tone. Um, and he had some real, real concerns and he told me that, you know, it really troubled him in his soul that, that I was disagreeing with some of these guys like Matt Chandler and some of the, you know, David Platt, all these other guys. Um, so instead of commenting on my YouTube videos in, in anger, he decided to just reach out to me and, and we had a, about an hour long phone call. Uh, and it was great. It was great. He was a young pastor, um, a black guy. And, you know, we had a fantastic conversation. We didn't come out agreeing. You know, I, I don't agree with his perspective still, and he doesn't agree with mine. Um, but it was an awesome conversation. We, we did not pull any punches. He told me exactly what his concerns were. I told him exactly what my concerns were. And we both kind of left the conversation, you know, wanting to talk again. And um, honestly, just sort of floored how God, you know, was working through um, people with completely different perspectives. And so, you know, I, I have no reason to believe that he's not a faithful follower of Christ. He seemed to really be concerned with what the Lord wanted. Um, and I think he was surprised how I sounded, how, how I sounded as someone who, who wanted to serve the Lord and wanted to do the right thing according to Scripture. Um, and so I, I hope we talk again. I mean, um, he didn't want to sort of make his name public at this point, which I totally understand. Um, but um, I just wanted to, you know, if you do watch this video, you know, shout out to you. That was a great conversation. Honestly, was thanking God for it afterwards. I hope you were as well. And I hope we talk again. Um, and I hope we meet someday. That would be awesome. Anyway, um, but the point is, though, we don't have to um, anathematize the other side. We don't have to make it seem like the people that are on the other side of this, so in my opinion, the so social justice Christians, um, we don't have to pretend like they're not believers in Christ. And they might be sincerely wrong and they might be doing damage to the church. And in my opinion, they very much are. Um, but I don't think that they're unbelievers. I don't think that they're pagans. Um, I think that they're, they're incorrect. I think that they're wrong about this and that they sincerely think they're right. They sincerely think that they're doing the gospel-centric, the Christ-centric thing. Um, I just think that they're mistaken about that. And um, so we don't have to, you know, treat the other side as if they're, they're borderline unbelievers. And I just, I, I hope that, that my side of this issue, you know, decides to, to sort of, you know, make sure that we're defining, you know, what a Christian is biblically. And if someone uh, proclaims the name, the name of Christ, they have fruit in their lives, they belong to a local church, you know, they're, they're, they're not denying that Christ was God in flesh and these kind of basic sort of level things that we are charitable about whether or not we determine if they're Christians or not. And we don't need to call them heretics. We don't need to, you know, mark them out. Um, we can stand against them. We can have strong words against their theology, but we don't have to treat them as if they're an unbeliever. I don't think that that would be the biblical thing to do. Um, so anyway, I, I made a Facebook post to that effect on Friday, excuse me, on Friday. And um, anyway, over, over the weekend, there was a little bit of a storm. Um, we had a, a brother, a pastor in the church, Dr. Eric Mason, calling for an ecumenical council. He wanted it to be the Council of Philadelphia. I don't know if he was joking or not. I don't think he was. Um, and basically to, to call people out as heretics. Look, look at what we have here. This is a tweet here. Dr. Eric Mason in, on the bottom here. We need a modern day ecumenical council on race and justice. We need canons and synods and creeds on this. Come to Philly, and we can call it the Council of Philadelphia. Limit it to 300 key men and women, pastors, and scholarly secretaries. Rebuke the heretics and affirm the sound. And here's Kyle J. Howard responding. It needs to happen. It needs to be specific. It needs to draw lines not only with explicit but implicit racism. Terms like cultural Marxism and ethnic Gnosticism need to be explained and a rebuke issued toward those who use it to malign black Christians. Now, what Eric, Dr. Eric Mason is talking about is um, basically having an ecumenical Christian council that says that if you do not uh, fall into line with this social justice stuff, then you will be branded a heretic. You will be outside of Christ. We will, we will treat you as an unbeliever. Now, it doesn't mean that they're going to beat us up or something like that, but they're going to essentially you know, not ratify our salvation. They're going to make this a gospel issue. Um, that is the exact opposite of what I was saying on Friday. We cannot do that. We cannot do that with the other side. They might do it to us. We cannot do it to them because that's adding to the gospel. 
If you're going to say that social justice definitions of, 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 of all these things are required to be, you know, a full, fully fledged believer in Christ, you know, I'm sorry, but that's adding to the gospel. That is insanity. Dr. Mason, that is crazy what you just said. And I got to tell you right now, I respect you as an elder in the church. I'm an elder in the church as well. I respect you as someone with uh, a great education, more education than me, but you are out of line with the gospel if you're doing that. You are out of step with the gospel. Your actions are out of step with the gospel. Now, let's go back to this. What prompted this? What do you think prompted Dr. Eric Mason saying we need a modern day ecumenical council to rebuke the heretics and affirm the sound? Want to see what it is? It's this, a tweet by Dr. James White. And all it says is, when the body gathers around the Lord's table, there is only one space, the savior space, the redeemer space, the mediator space. Anyone who drags color or ethnicity into that space is completely missing the point and the blessing. Hashtag one space, which I love, and hashtag one body. That is the tweet that that drove Eric Mason to say we need to have an ecumenical council to talk, call that heresy. They want that to be heresy. They want us to say, well, if we come to the communion table and we're making black, white, Latino, Asian important at the communion table, that's heresy to this mindset. I don't even know what to say to that. This is the most basic non-offensive, obviously biblical statement that I can think of regarding the Lord's table and race and ethnicity. Color or ethnicity or gender has no place at the table. We don't look at our differences at the table because we have one body. We have unity in Christ. That's what the Lord's table is. It's communion with the Lord. So yes, anyone who drags color or ethnicity into the communion table, into the fellowship that we have, the profound fellowship that we have with our brothers and sisters in Christ, that is a person that's missing the point. I'm not going to call you a heretic, okay? Because I just think that you're just wrong. I think that you don't know what you're talking about. That's what I think. I don't think you're a heretic. But if that's heresy, go ahead and, and brand me a heretic. I will gladly be branded a heretic for believing this. I have no problem with that. You can call me heretic. You can call me whatever you want. Uncle Tom, House Negro, you can call me whatever you want. If it's for believing this, go ahead. Go ahead. By the way, I love the hashtag one space. I think we should all use it because it uses one of their favorite words, space, against them. Because they always talk about black space, white space, this space, well, female space, male space. Not at the table. You can have all your spaces if you want to. I, I don't believe, believe in that either. You can have your black spaces, your white spaces, whatever, if you want to in the world. But at the table, there is no such thing. If that's heresy to you, then you are way more mistaken than I ever thought you were.